Hi, in this video, I want to give you a few examples of things that I've automated in my Linux environment. You probably know that I'm using the command line a lot and I'm a huge fan of automation. I just think that's using the computer in the right way, especially as software developers. And there are many, many things that we can just do in a somewhat easier way depending of course on the system that we're using, but just in general, if we're a little bit, let's say creative with things. And the reason in what I want to show you in this video is just to give some inspiration and just some examples of what you can do um, in your environment, especially if you use the command line, especially if you're on a Unix based system and just things that we can do easier. So one example is that I actually am writing my blog in ASCII doc and I somewhat or automated that how to uh, deploy this. So I will share uh, also some uh, repos with you how you can do similar things. So basically what that means, all of these, um, all of these blog posts are written in ASCII doc and then are deployed uh, in a way that I just write them in ASCII doc, execute a script. And I see this on a staging environment, how it looks like, and I have another script to basically deploy it. And that's just all command line based, like literally an application that um, listens to a Git repository where my ASCII doc files are located, and then they will be uh, translated um, into HTML in a specific markup. And then I can just see uh, the result and update it accordingly and run a script to, to do that. And similarly, I'm using ASCII doc also to write some um, invoices or even letters for my work. So when I write um, an invoice for a client, for example, for me, it's just so much easier to write that in a plain text editor and then having um, ASCII doc or a similar format generating a PDF for me, which I then can further use. So after you have the initial effort of uh, setting up a template, like how that's supposed to be uh, used, then you can just invoke a script that builds uh, the result for you it doesn't matter if it's HTML or a PDF. And there you go. Actually, um, all of the things on my website have been um, automated in a similar way that the source is in ASCII doc. So that's similar to a uh, newsletter uh, that I have, because the newsletter that I'm writing also should be available for me. So I think as uh, on my website, but of course, I also want to write this only once which means the source is also an ASCII doc file. And then I have a script that actually does two things. First of all, it generates the HTML for the um, newsletter email that will be sent and also a slightly different HTML because of mockup mock -up reasons for the site that is going to be published. And um, with that, it's just easier to do so. Some more examples. What I have, which is very helpful, is just a timer that I actually can set with, well, a script and some um, alias, of course. So uh, I have a command line alias to just set, a self, uh, set myself a timer, which is actually the only notification on my system um, so that I you know, can remind myself of something that is upcoming or when I want to time box my tasks to just say I want to work um, on that for 20 minutes and then I get interrupted. So just to set that is also a much easier way rather than to pick up my phone and tell it what to do or to open up another app. So there needs to be like an automation uh, shortcut for that as well. Similarly, I have an automation when I go into some session such as a presentation or actually a working session when I want to set up my environment in a specific way. Like for instance, this workspace should um, show the browser with these and these tabs and here should be my IDE and my terminals over there and all of that. And you typically when you do these things, you find doing these the same actions, the same mouse movements all over again by just wielding all these windows around in the beginning of your working day. And what I'm doing instead, I just automate um, to have, for example, some um, development session on my uh, day captain side project to just work on it, which basically opens up my IDEs or um, all these projects, my command lines uh, and browser windows, because we, we tend to you know, arrange these things in always the, sim uh, the same way, which makes sense. But of course, you can automate it so that at the beginning of the day, you can just execute a script and then uh, lean back while you're sipping your coffee or water for that matter. And you could watch the computer to do 
uh, these things for you. And I think this just really makes sense because we're supposed to automate um, what the computer does for us. So even similar things such as open up, uh, opening up the same browser tabs all over again, that can be automated as well. Um, some other examples are, for example, when I am creating some new uh, projects, just because I do a lot of like example projects or temp uh, projects to try out things, then while well, I'm executing some scripts to, to typically create Maven projects, and now you might ask yourself, well, Sebastian, there is something like a Maven archetype, why you're not using that? Well, uh, actually, that's just easier uh, for me uh, because I can just then say, okay, create a bunch of files. It's actually so much faster than uh, creating some uh, archetype where then you have to delete some stuff. So for me, if I not want to share that, if it's literally just for some testing purposes, I said, well, actually, you know, create these bunch of files and that directory structure, and there you go. And I have the full control and it's very pragmatic and easier uh, for me to actually uh, do that. So this is the reason why, why I'm using that. And as you see with most of my scripts, it's a very, very pragmatic approach. Um, and just just works for you know what I otherwise would do manually. So this works uh, actually really really well. Um, similarly, if I use some setup where I uh, have a cloud environment such as a Kubernetes cluster or Istio, uh, then I also have some scripts to just create them for me um, because all of the clouds al allow you to use an API or they come with some command line, and of course you can further au automate that. So similar to um, any uh, command line such as the cube control that is perfect for automation because you can use uh, a bunch of commands, put them into a script, automate that, and there you go. So this is uh, really, really nice to just say, well, whatever you uh, would like to try out. Um, naturally, in the type of work that I'm mostly doing, I create a lot of um, example projects and building up environment that I use and then tearing them down, building them up again. This really, really helps if you just have some automation for that for all of the stuff that otherwise you would do manually. And of course, this is also safer because then if I execute a script, I just know that, well, all of these steps work. And if not, then I have to modify the script. But then if something changes in the version or whatever, I just see, well, what's actually going on. And that is somewhat a more deterministic way rather than just uh, trying, trying out things uh, yourself. So these were uh, most of the um, examples of uh, what I use automation for. Um, I have a bunch of other scripts, for example, to uh, copy uh, and archive some uh, pictures and videos out of um, off a camera, such as a GoPro, which you can just connect and then uh, you can uh, automate that as well. So whatever just otherwise takes a lot of, um, uh, a lot of time yourself. Um, I have a lot of uh, shortcuts and aliases such as to set reminders, for example, um, add some uh, important uh, to do, which then uses an HTTP API to my task management system. And, you know, all these things just help a lot uh, for automating stuff that otherwise involve either touching the mouse or opening up multiple things, or actually just even typing multiple things, right? So whenever you find yourself in a situation where you're like, okay, I would like to do one thing, quote unquote, but that one thing involves multiple steps, multiple movements, multiple hand movements and whatever. And then there's probably an easier way to round to say, if, if I have one thought that needs to be executed, well, just do this in, in some way. And then typically for me, um, something like a bash script is uh, a very, very uh, good way to go. Uh, some other examples, uh, this comes from the time when I was uh, traveling uh, more or traveling at all uh, with, I actually, this sounds fun, but I actually have a shortcut and a script to set uh, the time zone on my system. Well, from a time when I was uh, traveling so much that actually I yeah needed a shortcut for that because otherwise it uh, it was uh, yeah quite, quite often. Uh, similarly, I have a um, script that just shows me uh, the current time zones of my local time. If I say, um, if it's um, 6 p.m. in my local time, what does that correspond to? Uh, to some other time zones that are regularly used with uh, clients and friends and uh, colleagues. And, you know, that just helps. And 
it's easier to say, well, I need to go to this website or um, ask Google, which you know time it is right now in some other place. So, so all these things, all these minor tasks that we otherwise do manually can actually be automated, especially if it doesn't involve some creativity, some thinking on our side, all of that can be you know, solved in a somewhat easier way. So these are a few examples that I wanted to show you. Another interesting story uh, that I uh, come across and I think I showed, I shared that in the in the past was just a, um, actually a true story of a, um, no, well, not hacker, but a Russian sysadmin who also basically automated all kinds of part on his, uh, of his work. And I found just the interesting thing you can read through uh, uh, through that um, Git repo is just how he basically automated interaction with other uh, humans as well. Like, you know, sending random uh, excuses when, when the person would be late for work and all that stuff where I say, okay, this actually gets a little bit dangerous where, where then you, you don't know whether you actually want to automate that, but just at least, you know, executing something like uh, resetting a database to, um, uh, to some backup state well, that of course should be done in an automated way. I um, am also sharing my dot files on uh, my GitHub repo, uh, this one here, where you can just uh, see some uh, example scripts uh, as well that I just uh, put there. So some of them uh, involve the scripts that I actually am using myself and that, that involve the Linux system that I'm using and the i3 window manager that I'm using. So for me, that's just a very easy way. Uh, and also, again, I'm really not a bash uh, scripting expert or anything like that. I literally just uh, try to go for a very pragmatic way how to solve things in an automated way. And I have to Google myself around using, you know, a bash syntax many, many times, like literally, I, I think that's also probably not the easiest, uh, easiest programming language, but it is really pragmatic just to say, okay, how can I use um, things and solve things in an automated way? And I think there's a lot of a value in doing so. So I'm really, really curious what you use automation for, especially if you use uh, a Unix based system. So I'm uh, very happy to hear your comments. Please uh, uh, comment that, you know, like uh, what to automate or how to automate uh, stuff. I'm also happy if you have a similar uh, shared uh, repositories uh, with some bash scripts or stuff like that. Uh, please put that into the comments. And if you found this entertaining, I would really appreciate if you like the video. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.